here with Steve Bennett, the uh, founder of Primal Cure. Um, businessman, father of seven. Um, this is a book that you started writing about three years ago. Yep. Um, what was the inspiration behind this? Uh, it was 2014. Uh, that March, I walked to the North Pole with my son-in-law, Jake, uh, a doctor we took with us and a guide. We're the only British team to do it that, that year. Uh, and sadly, our doctor got frostbite, um, which was terrible. He had to get airlifted out. And I came back from the North Pole, learned a lot about how to deal with cold temperatures, obviously, and a lot about diet there, because you, when you get cold, you burn loads of calories. So I learned what food you could eat that was very calorific mm -hmm. to, to get the calories in, because we needed to, because we were burning so much energy. Burning 9,000 calories of energy a day, yeah, because it was so cold. Uh, got home, and my wife said, um, you got to run a marathon tomorrow. The day I got back, I went, oh no. The young lad in, in, in the class was, was very ill, uh, in my son's class, and uh, she said, I've signed you up for the marathon. Wow. I couldn't even feel my feet, right? No. Because I would got frost wow. nipping in my feet. Ran the marathon. Did terribly. Uh, got a real terrible, terrible time. Uh, but the point is this, you know, at that time, walked to the North Pole, all the medicals I had to have for insurance. I'd trained for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, literally every day I was walking around the village, around my garden with a tractor tire on a rope, getting ready to pull the sledges and to get fit. And having said all of that, and I was doing everything I thought was right in terms of exercise and jogging. I was eating low fat, everything in the supermarket, because that's what my dietitian mm -hmm. at the time was saying, Steve, low fat, low fat, low fat. And yet I was technically obese. I was 29 and a half percent body fat. And, and it was just ridiculous. I, whatever I tried, I just couldn't lose the rolls and rolls of fat. Mm. Uh, and I was obese. And later that year, I was with the Maasai. Uh, I was working out in Kenya and on the border with Tanzania in one of our charity projects. And uh, we were eating what you eat with the Maasai, which tends to be goat, not cooked particularly great, <laughs> and loads of fat. And I'm taking the fat bits off and they're laughing at me. Um, and one of them actually said to me, you take that off because you want to look big? And I went, no, I take it off because <laughs> I want to look thin. And they came out like, well, <laughs> and these were all these Maasai guys. First of all, they were all really tall and muscly and strong, uh, much taller than me. And, uh, but they all look absolutely fantastic. So I thought, hang on a minute. I've got, I'm doing what I think I'm right. These guys look better than me, more mm. health than me. Right, third part of the story, later that year, my wife says, I'm, I'm pregnant, we're gonna have another baby. We'd have a seven year break. And I thought, well, that's great, but I'm unhealthy. How am I gonna be around mm. for, 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 for the new baby, you know, into their teens and still be able to do sport Absolutely. like I have with, the, with them, like I have with the other kids. So I was really worried. Yeah. And uh, January came around, like every New Year's resolution. I thought, no, I'm really gonna get mm. fit this year. I'm gonna, step back from running the core business, uh, let the rest of the family run the main business, and I'm gonna find out what's going on with my health so I'm around for the kids. So I hired doctors, I hired uh, uh, personal trainers, I had loads of people to help me get uh, fit. And I started realizing or found out that most of the things I believed about health and fitness were actually wrong. Yeah. And we were doing medical studies, we were doing research and so on and so forth. And that's how the book came about. I started writing it down for my benefit, for the kids' benefit. Um, and then it just became bigger and bigger and bigger. And before I knew it, I was halfway towards the book. And everyone I was talking to, I said, well, try this, try that. And I'd come back a couple of weeks later and they go, Steve, it really works. I go, yeah, yeah, I know it works. Yeah. And the whole premise is, uh, and it's quite simple in, in a nutshell, is that the exercise we do and the foods we eat have to be in line with what yeah. the body expects. Yeah. And, and evolution takes a really, really long time. And we're not evolved to eat the food we eat today. This whole regime of thinking we should do lots and lots of endurance sport is kind of wrong. Yeah. You know, for long-term health and long-term happiness and longevity on the joints and everything, we need to walk more, move more, but not this crazy joggy thing that I was doing. You need to sleep more. I wasn't getting enough sleep, so I was getting up early, which was counterproductive because I was getting up early to go to the gym so I could go to the North Pole, but actually now I learn, unless you get your seven to nine hours sleep, it's all counterproductive. And, and that's the basis of the book. We, we look at diet and nutrition, lifestyle and environment, and how to live longer, happier lives. And the key thing in the UK is to try and help as many people as possible start to shed some weight, because sadly we're the most obese nation in, in Europe. Uh, the statistics are absolutely terrible. You know, the average human being in the UK, the average adult is two and a half stone heavier than the year I was born. That's in just 50 years, 
on average, we're two and a half stone heavier. Yet 50 years ago, listen to this, right? Jogging wasn't even invented, jogging, wow. right? The word aerobo aerobics only came around in the late, in 68, when Ken Cooper in America coined the phrase aerobics, uh, trying to get people to jog more, thinking that an elevated heart for a longer period was actually healthy and good for the cardiovascular, which we're now kind of proving isn't the right thing. Yeah. We've just got to get out and walk more. Walk more, yeah. walk more, move more. Yeah. Isn't that shocking? Yeah. 50 years ago, but yet jogging wasn't even invented. Yeah. Um, that really gives you food for thought. This is about sort of almost going back, isn't it? And sort of going back to what um, what we what we've kind of lost over the years, you know, um, going back to basics, sort of the foods, the diets, the, the exercise, the environment and, and everything like that. Is that what your inspiration was with Primal Cure? I think the inspiration was just get my, my own health back on track, for, for mainly for my kids' sake, mm -hmm. I wanted to be around, and then getting really frustrated with things that I thought yeah. that I've been taught over the years was healthy turned out not to be healthy. So things like, and it's all in the book, you know, they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It this, isn't. Yes. Read the book. You know, it's actually probably the most dangerous yeah. meal of the day, especially with the type of foods we eat at breakfast. It's just completely the wrong thing to get the day going. So uh, you know, breakfast, most important meal of the day, no. Yeah. Eat little but often, no. Really? Eat little but often, then the repair system doesn't get chance. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the immune system and the repair system and natural uh, gut needs that space to be able to start and, and kickstart the repair mechanism. So le eating a little bit often is wrong. Fasting is what we should be doing, mm -hmm. but you can't fast really until you start learning how to kick sugar because it's too miserable. Mm -hmm. So I try and get the order right in the book. Let's teach people to get off the big sugar rush and off as much packaged food as possible back to whole foods and real foods. And then when we're not so sort of uh, reliant on sugar and once we've kicked, it's a bit of a habit, then I teach people how to yeah. fast a little bit because we, we now know that, you know, we say caveman went from famine to feast. That's what the body's designed mm -hmm. for. You know, it needs that big repair system. So there's a whole big thing on, on fasting. Um, but it's all written about how do we longer and healthier, yeah. uh, and, but in, in the long term. Absolutely. Because maybe in the short term, jogging might be a way of shedding a few pounds. Not for everybody, mm. because most people, when they jog, they only burn off that amount of calories and then go and reward themselves with sugary yeah. drinks and sugary foods straight after, which actually put on more weight yeah. than, the, the, than, the, than the jogging helped with. So really, it's about food, moving more, trying to get the right amount of sleep, trying to get out in the sunshine as much as you can, but all inspired by me really being fed up yeah. with the misrepresentation, mislabeling of food, uh, the wrong advice and looking behind all that advice I, I took my whole team and we started to look behind well who put that announcement yeah. out who put that and how about this just in the 70s we're not talking too long ago what 50 years ago in the 70s there was an advert in America put out by the sugar council that said if sugar is that bad for you mm -hmm. they actually said this in their own advert how come we don't see fat kids wow. and now look what's happened 50 years later Isn't that I, I, I think honestly we're gonna think the same about sugar maybe hopefully as soon as possible, yeah. but maybe 10 years from now, we'll think the same about sugar being infused in food as you know, we thought about cigarette bomb, as we now think about the cigarette industry. What I absolutely love about this book is it's not a diet, it's not do this, do that, nope. it's, it's, it's sort of making your own, for your own body, for your own DNA, what suits you as a person. Because I know, you know, for many people out there, I hear so many women talking to friends and family, you know, tried this diet, hasn't worked, tried that diet. What I love is this isn't a diet, this no. is a way of life. This is something that you can sustain throughout your life, which I think nobody else has really sort of put that across. Oh, well, thank you. And the word diet itself is a Greek word from dietes, mm -hmm. D-I-A-T-I-S. <laughs> anyway, outspell, I'm dyslexic, it doesn't really matter. But it's a Greek word and it means way of life. Mm -hmm. Whereas really the, the sort of interpretation over the last 50 years has been a diet is something that you try, it's a bit faddy yeah. and it's a bit of an idea, it's a bit quirky, it's counting calories here, it's doing this, doing that. And they just don't work. I mean, if they worked, we wouldn't be in the state we're in today. Exactly. This is not a diet book in the new way of thinking, it's a diet book in the old way of thinking, which is a way of life. I'm trying to help you understand different foods so you make the right choices. Yeah. And you said a minute ago, everybody's different. Yeah, everybody's slightly different. What works for an 18-year-old uh, girl at university will be different to a 50-year-old who's working you know, in an office. Mm. What works for a mom with three young kids that can't sleep as much because 
she, she, she has to get up early, yeah. is going to be different to a 60-year-old or 70-year-old who's just retired. So it's a little bit different for everybody, but the understanding and the principles are pretty much the same. Our environment and the food we eat has changed more over the past 100 years than over the past 1 million, and there are more people suffering with preventable illnesses than ever. So much for progress. How would you feel if I told you that most of what we've been conditioned and brought up to believe about food and health is simply wrong? We've all heard, don't skip breakfast, it's the most important meal of the day. Never sunbathe, it causes skin cancer. Eat three meals a day and eat little but often and so many more and all are wrong. Some of the biggest health misconceptions of modern times. Primal Cure is here to challenge these misconceptions and unveil the truth about weight loss and how to improve our health and ultimately our longevity. Steve Bennett, the author of Primal Cure, details the picture as it unfolded for him on his journey to restoring his own health and well-being after spending his adult life overweight. In the book, Steve, um, you talk about a beautiful place called Ikaria. And I wanted to know what was your, why this place in particular did you feature in this book? I didn't want to dive straight into primal and start talking about cavemen and how to live primally because I thought, yeah, that's a step too far and not everybody will be able to relate to that straight away. So right at the very beginning, I started to look at the hot spots around the world where people are living longer and healthier and happier lives. And I found a little island that is just a stone's throw from Azmir, where in, in Turkey, uh, we make a lot of our, uh, our half care products, mm -hmm. uh, our teas are made there. Uh, and this little island uh, is known as a, a hotspot for longevity. Uh, there's more centenarians living on this little island where there's 10,000 people per population. There's more 100 year olds than almost anywhere else wow. on the planet. So I thought, well, how is it on this little island? Are they living a lot longer than certainly you know, most of the rest of Europe? So I start to look at their lifestyles, what they were eating, how they behaved, their relationships, and uh, it was a fascinating study. And um, just explain what we can sort of, what are they doing to be able to have that longevity of life? What is it so different that they're doing there that we're not doing here? First of all, they're living very primarily. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people say, uh, or they certainly believed to start off with when they start to realise these people were living longer and longer and longer, was uh, it must be something you know, in their blood or it must be something they've inherited. Cool. What they actually found was when people left that island, their life expectancy just became close to wherever they were going. So if they moved to mainland, mm -hmm. whatever the life expectancy on the mainland was, that's what their life expectancy became. So it wasn't anything they inherited mm -hmm. in, in their blood or their genes, it must be something that's happening on the island. So let's break it down. Diet, yeah. fantastic, <laughs> right? They're eating no packaged foods or very little packaged foods, healthy foods, lots of nuts, lots of olives and olive oils, drinking lots of herbal tea. So whatever herbs are uh, in season at that time, they're making their own teas. So they're eating the right mm -hmm. foods. Next thing, stress. They seem to be very, very low yeah. on stress. We know stress can be very detrimental to the health. So much so, very few of them wear watches. Yeah. So they, their, their, their guiding clock is just how they feel. If they want to stay up late one night, they stay up late. If they want to go to bed early, if they own a shop and it should open at nine, but they're, not, they're feeling a bit tired, they'll open at 10. Yeah. And sometimes you go down the main roads there and all the shops shut just because everybody had a party the night before, okay? They're big into relationships. Yeah. Relationships of people underestimate how part being part of a family mm. or a group of friends, socialising and getting together, a reason to, to go on living and so on and so forth. So they're very strong on relationships. They're eating good foods. They're drinking lots of herbal tea. And they are walking like crazy. This is a small island that's very hilly and it's not uncommon in the daytime to see 90-year-olds, 95-year-olds mm. out and about walking up and down hills carrying their shopping back mm -hmm. home you know, in the old-fashioned way. So 
it's they're not jogging. No, and you talk about that a lot actually, the jogging side of it, you know, forget jogging, go outside and take a walk, you know, go and take a nice long brisk walk and, and that's something that they're doing and that's obviously really key. Yeah, you know what, this whole thing about jogging has been so controversial yeah. and I've had more people talk to me and say you're wrong on this one, but I think I'm 100% right. So look, what is the body designed to do in terms of exercise? Well, let's, you know, we know evolution is a long thing. We talk about it a lot in the program. So what's, let's think back to caveman, which is where we've evolved from. What did he do? Well, he didn't go jogging every day. Mm. Certainly didn't cycle, because yeah. there were no bikes, right? The wheel wasn't invented. Um, but he didn't jog either. Yeah. People got this wrong, you see. He didn't go for two hours at a time jogging endlessly with the elevated heartbeat. What he did was he walked a lot, nomadic, so they had no fixed abode. So they're walking, walking, walking. Then occasionally they'd have to sprint to catch an animal or sprint to get away from an animal sometimes. Uh, and they'd have to lift heavy things. But at no point do they jog endlessly hour on hour. So our body is not designed. And this whole thing around aerobics, I think a lot of people have got it wrong. Not saying you should mm -hmm. be a couch potato and therefore yep. Steve says don't jog, sit on a sofa. Not saying that. I'm saying change the jogging mm. for walking. Walk, 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 more walking. Get out and move more, enjoy the outside more, uh, and occasionally lift some heavy things, whether that be weights or your children, <laughs> uh, but lift more heavy things. Uh, and when you do get fit, if you can add a bit of sprinting, the body's designed for it. But that's like the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. The key thing is walk more. Yeah. And we go to Akira, and what do we see? We don't see loads of fanatics jogging and jogging around the streets. Uh, we see just people out and about, enjoying life, walking more, enjoying the sunshine. Uh, and another reason I'm pretty convinced that they've got this real longevity is less toxins. Yeah. So less of them on the mobile phone all the time, yeah? Um, more their creams are natural, and like I say, this is very close uh, to where we're making most mm. of our creams. Uh, and, and in fact, all our teas that we have, our range of teas here uh, at Primacure are inspired by Ikeria. Mm. They're made just across on the mainland. So although it's a Greek island, it's literally just off the Turkish coast. Yeah. And you talk about um, you know, it, 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 that all these things that, that you were talking about in the book, the primal living, how can we sort of, what are we doing so wrong then? Because what can we learn from the people of Icaria? Because they seem to be doing something right. If they're living up to their 70s, 80s and 90s, what can we be doing as a, as a nation to be able to change that? So, I mean, look, that's just the most brilliant question you could have asked. And I can answer it like this. I want to buy the book. First of all, the book's not for profit. All the profits from the book are going uh, to good causes. The book is written not like a diet book. Mm. It's not written like a health book or a sports book. It covers all the different topics that relate yeah. to what the body is designed for. So we break those into three. It's diet, as in what we eat, the nutrition that we eat. In fact, think about, about the word diet, first of all. Diet is a Greek word for way of life. Mm -hmm. So, Ikeria, way of life. Um, so not diet. Today, diet's used more like a fatty thing. Try this diet, try oh, that I diet, agree. stuff it. It's all wrong, you know. Yeah. Don't count, my thing is, don't count calories. No. You do it for a bit, you'll get bored, you'll stop, and you'll put on weight again afterwards. Don't count calories, learn about food. So, three things. We learn about diet and nutrition in the book. Uh, we learn about lifestyles, as in uh, how much sunshine we should get, how much sleep we should get, and so on and so forth. And then avoiding toxins is a big thing, because today, sadly, there are toxins in creams. There's mm. toxins in so many different things, in the air that we breathe when we live in big cities, uh, and so on and so forth. So the, the whole thing, back to Ikaria uh, again, and you can say Ikaria or Ikaria. Yeah. <laughs> Americans say it different to those in Europe, they say it different to the locals on the island. Um, but their way of living is just much cleaner, mm. there's less toxins, uh, it's very organic, yeah. uh, the food's healthy, their lifestyle's healthy, but they're out and about and they're mm. enjoying things. And you know, um, uh, one thing that I'm quite pleased about is they have an occasional glass of wine. Yeah. Which, you know, it, <laughs> so I read that, <laughs> I know. It, it's like, it's, you know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to necessarily cut out everything. You can have the occasional glass of wine. You can eat, you know, lovely fruit uh, and vegetables that, that we all know and love. Yep. Um, one thing that, that's really quite shocking, actually, when you read the book, is that you talk about an island that's, um, a place, sorry, that's about 10 kilometers away called Samos, that yep. where there the life expectancy it's is just, normal. Is, is just it's, the same as everywhere else. Yeah. Just that difference, and, and that's massive. That just really goes to show what the people of, of Akaria are doing yeah. is, 
It's different. I mean, yeah, we could learn so, so much. So the island next door, and the island next door sits in between Ikiria and Turkey mainland. It's sort of in between the two, so it sort of fills the gap right mm. in the middle. Um, and yeah, the life expectancy there is pretty mm. same as the rest yeah. of Europe. But there you've got a faster pace of life, mm. more holiday makers. So you've more holiday makers means more fast food mm. restaurants, more takeaway restaurants. Um, faster pace of life, got to be at work on time, mm. da, 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 da. whereas this is less touristy, mm. it's more about the locals and they're just enjoying and loving life naturally and isn't that the whole premises Absolutely. of Prime Cure, you know, enjoy life mm. as naturally as you possibly can. So, you know, if somebody came to you then, Steve, and said, look, Steve, I'm working 12 hour days, I've got three kids, how am I supposed to have that sort of peaceful, down, relaxation, sort of no stress kind of life? How am I supposed to do that? Yeah, and everybody else, you know, everyone's in different sort of cycles in their life, in different parts of their life. It's just trying to line up as many of the right things mm. as you can. So, you know, nobody can have that perfect, uh, an absolutely perfect life. But once you understand a bit about mm. food, a bit about nutrition, about the right type of exercise, it's step by step, mm. you know. So, for example, if there's a mother out there that's got three kids and highly stressed but goes out jogging every night because she thinks that's the right thing, at least if you take one thing away, it's not the right exercise. You'd be better off going and walking and just getting out more, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just trying to do as many things, mm -hmm. you know, I believe the book contains about 300 different bits of advice. Just do as many of those as you can mm. to put your life back on track. So we can all start making steps to be able to have a more stress-free environment or a better diet or a better lifestyle. So I, I think that we can take so much uh, from the people of Ikaria, of what they're doing, and actually they're setting a massive limit. Example. Huge, huge example, yeah. And what's going to be interesting over time, so the Primer Cure app, we're trying to get tens of thousands of people using the app where they log what they're eating, not calorie counting, mm -hmm. but just logging how primal they were and what exercises they were doing. So at the moment, we think it's about 80% around the diet and nutrition. We think it's 20% all the other things, gym, exercise, mm -hmm. uh, walking, uh, sunshine, etc., etc. But the moment we think and believe it's around about 80% mm -hmm. it's what you eat. You are what you eat, you've yeah. heard that many, many yeah. times. But from the data we're gonna get back over the coming years from the Primal Movement and everybody downloading the app, and people can do it anonymously, so we won't say, oh, Mary in Devon, you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> she's put weight this week, it's not about that. But uh, we'll be able to, with everybody anonymous, say that, look, we've evaluated 20, 30,000, it's all algorithms these days, and we'll be able to pinpoint different ages, where we'll say, actually, at that age, it's actually 95% diet, 5% mm -hmm. exercise, or it might be different. But, but at the moment, we, we firmly believe it's primarily around what you eat. Certainly, mm -hmm. if you're obese and overweight and you want to get your weight down, it's what you eat first that you've got to look at, you've got to get the right nutrients, and you've got to cut right back mm. on those sugars and carbs, because this is the thing that makes us fat, not fat itself, it's all in the book. Um, and, but back to Akira, yeah, lovely place. If you ever go to Turkey, especially if you go maybe on one of our factory visits to, to, to where we make all the, 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 the healthcare products, um, not supplements, we make supplements in the UK, but most of the skincare and our teas uh, in Turkey, it's literally a stone throw away. With every purchase of the book Primal Cure, and for every primal supplement we sell, we provide an undernourished child in a disadvantaged community with one month of nutritional support. Double the goodness isn't just a Primal Cure tagline, it's the very heart of everything we do. Visit primalcure.com to discover more about our campaign. We're talking about coenzyme Q10 today, and I have to admit, it's something that I'm not mm -hmm. exceptionally well educated on. And it's something that, I mean, you wrote in the book, it's not a vitamin. Yeah, it's not a vitamin because the human body, certainly up to a certain age, is very good at producing it. Sadly, as we get older and certainly sort of past the 50s, 60s, uh, we slow down the amount we can actually produce. And then as we get older still, you know, it, it gets to a point where actually some people actually don't produce it at all. Uh, and therefore, you need to get a lot of it from the diet. And you can get it through the diet through things like offal, so you know, kidneys and livers. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get it into a small extent from mackerel, from peanuts uh, and broccoli and a, a few others like spinach, but in very, very small numbers. So as we sort of change our diet over the years and, and, and as we age, we don't get as much CQ10 a in the diet or self-produced. 
So, uh, what I also noticed with this one, Steve, as well, is it's got no NRV yep. to it, which is the nutritional reference value, right? Yeah, I think the reason it hasn't got an NRV, and uh, same reason as it's not uh, a vitamin, is how do those scientists say yeah. you need this amount or that amount? Because you know, every you know, some body, some humans, certainly the younger ones, produce plenty of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's, it, you know, vitamins are supposed to be for everybody. So this isn't a vitamin because the human body makes it naturally, certainly as we're younger. You can get some of it regularly through uh, your diet. But just think about how life has changed. You know, you go back to caveman days, they were, you know, they'd catch an animal, they'd eat all of it, yeah? yeah. All of it. Uh, and in fact, even if you go back to when I was younger, you know, pate was always on the menu. In fact, still this, you know, every Christmas, my brother and myself, Religiously, that week before Christmas, we make a big pate. It's like a, a family tradition. We love our pate. You know, it's, it's, I always find it amazing how uh, you know, chicken livers uh, uh, and so on are actually so cheap to buy in the yeah. supermarket mm. compared to the rest of the chicken, and that's just supply and demand. You know, very few people are cooking uh, the offal these days, uh, and therefore, you know, that's the best way to get CQ10. Uh, into the diet. And you said earlier, you know, as we get older, we don't produce it as much. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that you would only take this supplement if you were, you know, 30 plus, 40 plus, 50 plus? What would you recommend? Yeah, I, I mean, I'd recommend everybody goes and does their own research. Mm -hmm. I wrote in the book that 50 plus, because that's when I started to take it. I looked at all the benefits of it. So hang on a minute. If this is the chosen food for the mitochondria. Now, the mitochondria is this, I always describe it as like the battery in the cells. Okay. It's not in all cells, there's a few cells we haven't got it in, but most cells in the body have mitochondria. In fact, they don't have one, some of them have many of them. In fact, some of the cells in the brain has up to like 200 mitochondria in each cell. And the mitochondria, I always describe it as the powerhouse or the battery within the cell. It's the bit that gives the cells the energy. Now, if that is, you know, if CQ10, coenzyme 10, is the chosen food to the mitochondria, the energy, the battery in the cells, I want to make sure I've got plenty of it. Yeah. I still eat nearly all the things that have it in yeah. anyway. I love my offal, I eat it regularly. I love my spinach, I love my loves, nuts, I love my sardines and mackerels, all the things that you can get it in. But what happens on days when I'm not taking enough, I panic personally right. that I'm not, you know, I'm you know, 52. Mm -hmm. So for me, literally, you know, from learning about uh, this very, very important ingredient or, or nutrition, uh, I've been taking it religiously uh, since my 50s. Because it's one of your favourites, isn't it? It's so. one of the seven I take yeah. every single day. And in fact, I take it twice a day. So uh, in here, we've done them in sizes uh, that we recommend two a day. Right. And I like together. to space it out. Well, you can take them together, mm -hmm. no problem with that. But I personally like to space it out. I take one in the morning, I take one with my magnesium before I go to sleep at night. Just trying to space out that energy for the cells. Uh, and again, not something that everybody needs to take. I think if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and, and unless you've researched otherwise, mm -hmm. or unless you've been given some other advice, of course, if doctors advise you take it, then take it. Uh, in fact, talking of doctors advising it, uh, in Japan, 10% of the population are on medication with this from their doctors. They believe in it so much in Japan that one in 10 people have it prescribed by their doctor because it's so important, it's important to give energy uh, to the cells. And again, being on television, you know, there's lots more things that you'll read in my book and other books about CQ10 that on television, it's against you know, what we're allowed to talk about uh, because we're not here to give medical advice. But yeah, CQ10, certainly if you're aging, may be worth putting uh, into one of your supplements. Uh, and certainly if you don't eat offal, uh, uh, because that's the best place to get CQ10. Yeah. Uh, if you're having plenty of peanuts, loads of spinach, sardines and mackles, again, you might not need it. But if you're certainly 50 plus uh, and you want that little bit of insurance policy, uh, even though it's not a recognized vitamin because the body, you know, certainly up to a certain age, can produce plenty of it, well worth adding uh, to your daily supplement routine. Order one month supply of Primal Coenzyme Q10 today for the amazing low price of $7.99. And if it's your first purchase from Primal Cure, we will send you a supplement organizer worth $9.99 completely free of charge. Plus, if you order two bottles of Primal Coenzyme Q10 today, then we will send you a third bottle completely free, making a further saving of 33%. Call our friendly UK call center 24 hours a day on free phone 0800 4402 888 or order online at primalcure.com. 
And if your online order totals more than £35, we will even deliver for free. As we want to be your preferred choice for all health and well-being products, if you don't love this product, send it back within 30 days for a full no-quibble money-back guarantee.